Trust, a non-profit, non-political, and non-sectarian organization on the roster of the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations and concerned with the establishment of world cooperation and goodwill presents Inner Sight with your host, Robert Anderson. He, with Sarah and Dale McKechnie, President and Vice President of Lucis Trust, will discuss philosophical and spiritual topics essential to everyday life. Now here's your host, Robert Anderson. Welcome. Inner sight is simply seeing that which is always present, but not yet fully recognized. You have within you the ability to see yourself and the world around you in a new way with new eyes. So stay with us and together we'll look at the world and ourselves with inner sight. Our topic for today is Atlantis Part 2 and before we get started I'd like to mention to you that uh, we have a special offer that I think you'll be highly interested in later but maybe we better take a look at it a little later and it started with our show. We always like to give credit to the founder of the Lucis Trust organization, Alice Bailey. Alice Bailey wrote 24 volumes of literature and the main inspiration for the dialogue that you hear from the, on this show comes from the works of Alice Bailey, as does the following thought. The sense of God, of immortality, of subtle inner relationships, and of worship and the undue sensitivity of modern man is our outstanding heritage from Atlantis. Last time you made some comments that seemed to link Atlantis with the world war of this past century. Could you say more about that? Yes, there's a, a fascinating discussion um, throughout the books of Alice Bailey on the um, oh the significance of Atlantis. As we said last week, it's um, a myth that has persisted in human um, traditions for ages and even Plato uh, mentioned Atlantis supposedly the United States is the old um, site of ancient Atlantis which is interesting it was located somewhere in the Atlantic and uh, it's a continent that disappeared in a great flood whether or not one believes that that is historically accurate Atlantis does, uh, according to Alice Bailey, describe a state of consciousness that um, remains even today. And that explains the significance or the relationship of the world war of the past century to the war on ancient Atlantis. Atlantis was a civilization of people who were almost completely um, polarized, you could say, in their um, astral or emotional body. They felt they sensed, they suffered, they struggled, they desired, desire for material things especially dominated them. They had almost no mentality at all. And uh, eventually their desire for the material, which was extremely advanced in that society, amazingly so, they lived according to the myths on a level of luxury that we could only aspire to today. Donald Trump would dream in his wildest dreams of uh, the luxuries that they apparently had on Atlantis but they became so so um, fixated on the material luxuries of life that uh, they lost their way spiritually speaking and finally uh, the, the society came to an end in a great war between the forces of light uh, forces of goodwill and spirituality uh, against the forces of darkness, which were those forces that uh, corrupted the emotional nature of the people and uh, led them into a, a uh, vortex of desire for material things. And that battle in that state of consciousness continues today, as we can all probably see. People continue to be uh, largely emotional in their consciousness, many people, not all. And that emotionalism and materialism are what have brought us to the present crisis. Yeah, I think that's an important point to bring out that um, the uh, how much we have inherited from 
Atlantis and from the Atlantean experience because uh, even though this continent has totally been wiped out and there's apparently no physical presence or no archaeological evidence of it <coughs> existing anywhere, which tends to confuse archaeologists, I suppose, but um, uh, it's in the memory banks, kind of, in a way, of mm -hmm. humanity and the memory of what happened in the state of life and the, the state of consciousness uh, as it was at that time is still with us and we bring these memories with us into uh, every life that we come into and that's why um, even though the material part of Atlantis has disappeared the emotional nature and the, the all the bad tendencies and the bad practices that were developed at that time are still with us and we bring them through, the soul brings them through into this life and uh, they are there present in our consciousness and affecting the way we think and do things and uh, particularly at that emotional level and that's why we have to recapitulate these old tendencies over and over again until we can get it right, until we worked our way out of um, these problems that developed way back millions of years ago. I wonder if there is also some connection in the fact that, as I mentioned, the United States is the uh, site of the old uh, Atlantean civilization, and um, many spiritual writings say that a lot of reincarnated Atlanteans live in America, and the fact that the American civilization has reached um, a crisis point in um, recent decades, its material power, its economic and political power in the world are unparalleled. And so maybe there are, maybe there's a resolution that's coming up for our attention because of the parallels between the uh, the civilizations due to geographical location and the reincarnation of a lot of souls, plus the fact that America today is dealing with a, a material abundance that is in many ways wonderful, but not equally distributed, and also not shared as it should be with the rest of the world, in my point of view. Yes, and speaking of the material abundance, it's it said that one of the um, one of the major sins that was developed in the Atlantean civilization was that of theft, and that's because the desire nature became so strong, uh, the desire for things became so strong with the people that uh, they began to steal what they wanted, and uh, so this has developed, and uh, I suppose that's why theft is so. Uh, prevalent in the world. Uh, we, we still desire these things and uh, we, we tend to steal them if we don't have them. So, Well, uh, there, are, there are cycles to all of these things and I, I often wonder at what point on the evolutionary scale we should place ourselves because we did live through the depression uh, of the 1930s when many people learned through force to do without material things and they they suffered many of them but they also probably developed a sense of the simple values in life followed by the war world war two which um, was um, a cause of enormous deprivation for millions of people all over the world um, I remember reading that Russia suffered so much that a lot of people during the winter of what 1942 were eating roots it's just unbelievable they um, they did with virtually nothing and survived so we've had these challenges in the last um, 50 or 60 years and many human beings have um, been amazingly uh, brave in coping with them but now here we are again in a cycle of uh, economic uh, largest that I find disturbing. The the distribution is of of the world's resources is so unbalanced. And that's probably a, a, a thing that we have to work out, particularly here.